Hey everyone, I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits, a video cast about knitting, spinning, and the fiber arts. Today I'm here to show you my party top progress, some of my beach knitting that I've been doing the past several months, uh, an update on my tweed yarn that I've been spinning, and also a bit of weaving. So let's get started. give a quick shout out to all of my new viewers. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn, and you can also connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome to all of my returning viewers as well. I'm so happy to join all of you again. And how is your late August? Mine is very full of mosquitoes, to be honest. <laughs> it is so buggy here in South Carolina, so buggy. I think part of it is we've been having rain every day and so the mosquitoes are loving it and I'm afraid some days that I will be carried away if I spend too much time outdoors. I have been so bit up and yeah, so not loving that. We've all been stay just staying inside, doing a lot of indoor things. So between the heat, the humidity and the bugs, yeah. This is just a reality right now, but I have noticed a change in the weather. Um, it has been so hot and humid here in the beginning of August, but I felt a change the past couple of weeks. And then when I checked out the 10 day forecast, it was all mid to low 80s for highs and then low 70s at night, which is unheard of when I'm gonna reach 90. So. Could this be, be the beginning of fall? We'll see, but I definitely am feeling autumn, which we'll probably have another heat wave in September, but that's okay. <laughs> I have some autumn sweater plans in the works, but let me go ahead and show you what I've been working on this week. So I shared with you last week the beginning of a new project. It is the party top. It's a super cute cropped sweater with eyelet sleeves. I'm knitting this for my daughter, my oldest daughter who's 13. And I'm using this yarn, which is Sure Thing from Pineapple Yarn. And it's a beautiful blend of neon pinks and warm corals and minty greens, of course with a lot of speckles but this is the progress I have on it so far. I have split for the sleeves and have about two inches below the underarms. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it last week, but I did decide to go ahead and do the eyelet sleeves. I wasn't sure if my daughter would like it or not. So that is it. And I, kind of paused on it because I want her to try it on. Um, the pattern calls for a very cropped style and I'm definitely not going to knit that for her because she is still growing like crazy. Um, so I want to make it a little longer and I'll probably have it just right below her waist or maybe a little longer. Uh, so it's more versatile and she can wear it with more things. And let's see, I am using, I believe a size, size six needle, which is a four millimeter. I used a US size four for the ribbing. And so far it's just, I'm loving this colorway. It is so beautiful. And yeah, no complaints on the pattern either. It's just a really cute pattern. And um, the one thing that I did I was a little concerned with, we'll see how it is when she tries it on, is there are no, uh, there's no short row shaping for the back of the neck. So basically I'm holding it so it looks like there is, but it's really not. The front and the back are even. And so this might make a difference, it might not, but I think if I was going to knit this again, I probably would do just a few short rows in the back of the neck. Uh, just to give it a little bit of shaping, but I, it's a really really cute pattern and my daughter is just over the moon with the yarn It's very pretty yarn. So that's going really well right now. I'm just doing stockinette rows around and around so 
that's the easy part. No complaints there. <laughs> So that's a knitting project that I've been working on this week, and I don't take it to the beach when I when I uh, when I go to the beach. I do I don't like working with wool at the beach. It's just a mess uh, between the humidity and sand and possible accidents. No, I don't do that. So what I did grab were some of the washcloths that I have made. These can be used as washcloths or dishcloths, actually. And I have knit these from a just, you know, a worsted weight cotton yarn. Um, some of the brands are Peaches. I think this was a Peaches and Cream yarn, and it was called Energetic Pink, if I remember correctly. This is, it was a variegated yarn, obviously, and I really liked this. I had several balls of this, and I just put an eye cord on this specific one and made a loop at the top and so it could be hung up. I don't know, when you're making so many dishcloths or washcloths, it's like, you know, let's try different techniques, you know? <laughs> so that's one of those. I made so many of these in the energetic pink color, um, but I've probably had three or four of them magically disappear and end up in my girls' things, in my girls' bathroom. So at least they're getting used. <laughs> this one I played yarn chicken and lost. And so it has just the tiniest little black and white corner, which I think is kind of cute. And so what I do on these, um, I use grandma's, I believe it's called grandma's favorite dishcloth by PJ Allen. And I just knit and knit and knit. When I run out of yarn, I add another color. And so it just doesn't really matter what the colors are to me. Um, these are going to be completely utilitarian. But I did like this. This was kind of fun. This is a dishy twist from Knit Picks, and it was the black and white twisted yarn. And I love how that looks. I really, really like this. And I ended up getting this one plus three more and I still have a little ball of it. So that's a pretty good, pretty good return, I think, especially for one ball of the yarn. So yeah, I bought a, a, a whole slew of yarn, uh, oh, I'd say maybe a month or two ago, probably about two months ago. And so I have a lot of this cotton yarn just because it's such a great, mindless project. Um, the pattern is so easy to memorize and it doesn't matter if your yarn gets wet. Um, it still is super easy to knit even in humidity. So yeah, I just wanted to give you an update on that because I haven't shown you these in a while and I want to start using them actually. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is use these in the kitchen actually. Um, Right now I have kind of a mix of um, kind of commercially knit dishcloths and woven dishcloths and I have some microfiber cloths and so I want to start using these and then only use my microfiber cloths when actually, I when I absolutely need them, like with polishing something or maybe a mirror. So, because I really like these, they have just a wonderful texture, the garter, the garter stitch on them is really nice. And yeah, so I guess the other thing to mention on these is that I did not do the hole increases that is called for in the pattern. So I just wanted to make them a little more durable and I figured if I didn't uh, put the eyelets in, then they would probably last longer. So that was my thinking on that. <laughs> So that's what I have for knitting. Uh, my goals for next week are to really push through on the party top. I wanna get quite a bit done, especially because the body is what always slows me down. Once I get to a sleeve on a sweater, it is no big deal. I can really knit sleeves quickly, which is funny because I think many people are the opposite, is that it takes a long time to knit the sleeves. So I really wanna get that sweater done. Um, because it is a DK weight, it's fairly fast. It's not a fingering weight sweater. 
So I'll be able to get that done. Plus I have plans for my next sweater for me. <laughs> so I'll talk more about that next week. The next thing I wanna share with you is some spinning that I worked on. You might remember from last week, I made some Rolags and they were from a kind of tweed that I created. I don't even know how to say what I did. Um, this is all leftover yarn from pineapple yarn, um, little ends that I've cut off or ties. And so there's so many different colors in these Rolags and I made a whole slew of them. Uh, this is an undyed Polworth fiber, so it's super, super soft. It's absolutely wonderful. And I had um, rolled up a lot of Rolags. And so let me show you what I worked on. I have two bobbins full of yarn. These are both singles. And this was very interesting to spin. <laughs> I did a supported long draw on these just to try and capture all of the tw little tweedy bits, um, all of the little yarn bits. And it did capture many of them and many of them also popped out and fell on me and fell to the ground. It was a very, very messy spin. So every time I spun, I had to vacuum <laughs> afterward. But I think all in all, it did capture quite a bit of the tweed. So what I am going to do now with these, I did not, um, I didn't do an exact spin. So I didn't like weigh out the Rolags to make sure that these were the same. I tried to spin consistently. This is really not a consistent spin. Um, I eventually just decided I wanted to get through it and I would ply them together and probably weave with them. And I have found in my past projects that I like an uneven yarn to weave with. It just adds a lot more, um, it adds a lot more interest. And so I wasn't, I was trying to be consistent, but not super consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to apply these on my jumbo bobbin and we'll see how that goes. Um, I did, I actually do have a finished spin I'm going to show you in a minute, but I applied that up on my jumbo bobbin and it, because the whirl is so slow, uh, it was a little more tedious than I really wanted because I do like to spin fast. <laughs> I always wanna get through projects quickly. So anyway, Here's where I am on my tweed yarn and hopefully I'll be working on playing this this week. And in case you wondered, I ended up with two Rolags left. Um, what I'm going to do, I just, the reason I had them left is I really couldn't fit any more on my bobbins. And so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to just put them in my Rolag stash. Um, my girls have so many Rolags and that they have rolled up and I will just kind of add it to their little stash. <laughs> so this is my finished spin from this week. I have, I guess I've talked about this. I don't know if I showed any of the singles, but this is a beautiful merino wool from Yarn Hero and it's called Luau Party. I purchased it, oh, a while back, maybe, maybe about a year and a half ago. And it is a beautiful two-ply barber pulled spin. I used a supported, oh, I, I used a backward draw, a short backward draw with, with smoothing. And I think this is so beautiful. It's six ounces. So it is a massive, massive skein of yarn. <laughs> But I loved all the colors in it. It had so, it has so, so many colors. And um, yeah, I just, I really love how it turned out. It turned out fairly consistently, um, you know, it just did, it's okay. <laughs> I definitely will use it, especially because it's such a large amount. Um, I would say it's probably a solid DK to worsted weight. 
So yeah, this was really fun. I applied this up on um, my Chromsky Minstrel, which is my spinning wheel. And I applied it up on the Jumbo Bobbin, which you can purchase as an accessory to the wheel. And the reason I did is because it is six ounces, my bobbins, my normal size bobbins only hold four. And so I really didn't want to break it into two skeins. And so I did everything on the jumbo and I did get a little impatient plying. Um, so my situation with spinning is I have it, in my living room, I think I mentioned this last week because my son, these were the singles that he grabbed and just, you know, he literally like ran around the furniture and tangled them all up and had a great time doing it. <laughs> but um, I was able to salvage obviously quite a bit of it and ply this up. But so my situation with plying is that I like to get it all done in one night. And so when I ply, I ply very, very quickly. Um, I'm sure if I plied more slowly and with more care, my yarn would come out more consistent. But I don't really have the luxury of putting my wheel somewhere. I could put it out here in the studio uh, because my children aren't allowed to come out here. But then again, I don't sit out, I only work out here and I don't really knit so much. Anyway, or spin, this is my work area, <laughs> really. <laughs> so anyway, I got this done. Uh, no plans on to what it will become. It will just go into my stash. <laughs> okay, I am going to move on to weaving and uh, for those of you who may be new, I purchased a loom. And the loom I purchased is a Kromsky Presto loom. It's a 10 inch loom, so it's a really small loom. And I've been working my way through just learning the all the parts of a loom, the techniques on a loom, and I've been really trying to hone all of my learning on that loom because I do want to purchase a larger loom down the line. But this one is so nice to, it's just so fast to warp up and weave on and see where your errors are and um, because it is so small. So I'm really, really loving the weaving process. So I wanted to show you what I finished up. It's kind of finished. <laughs> This is kind of a whole line of dishcloths that I wove up in a waffle weave pattern. This is a pattern that I purchased on Etsy and it's called Thick Textured Dishcloths. I will put a link below if you wanna check it out. And it's a very simple pattern and I was so happy to have the pattern itself uh, because it just, taught me a lot of little things that uh, maybe would be obvious to other seasoned weavers, but obviously I'm such a beginner that I'd, I just don't know. Um, so what you do with this, basically what I did is I obviously wove up a ton of these different dishcloths. I think I wove up maybe six of them. And the yarn I used is the Dishy uh, worsted weight cotton um, yarn from Knit Picks, and that's the same one that I have been using for some of my uh, dishcloths and washcloths that I knit at the beach. And so this is what it looks like woven up. I believe I used an eight dent heddle, and fingers crossed when I wash this that all the little holes will fill in. <laughs> Supposedly they will. Um, and then up here with these white parts, this is just a crochet cotton, that really thin, uh, I, th I think the kind I use is a mercerized uh, cotton. And I had some in my stash for something, I have no idea what. But what you do is, uh, you do a little finishing on the sewing machine. So what you do is just do a zigzag along these edges. And if you see this black stripe right here, this is actually a piece of construction paper that I folded up very, let's see, I folded it up into about eighths and then put it in between each project. And so what I'm going to do is just run a stitch on either side here, and then I'll be able to cut it and it won't unravel. 
After I cut it, I am going to wash it on hot and dry it, and it should kind of full up and just make a really nice, uh, really nice fabric. And then I will fold under these bits that have the crochet cotton and fold them up under and make a hem. So I just knotted, um, you know, the ends of my warp right here, as you can see, those will be gone. There won't be any fringe on them. So yeah, this pattern was really great. Um, the techniques I learned on this were um, just, you know, obviously like following a weaving pattern. I've never done that before, really. Um, and also using a pickup stick. And so that made all the difference in this texture. It's, it's a very simple pattern actually. And with the addition of the pickup stick, you just have uh, another kind of pattern you can add to the weaving. And so what I did, uh, this is the first one I did and I did it exactly as the pattern specified. And then this one, I'll show you a close up of both of them. So as you can see, this one doesn't have much of uh, a selvage on the edges. And so the next one, I left more of just a plain selvage on the edges. So we'll see how that works out. Um, that's actually how I wove the rest of them. And uh, I really liked how that looked. So you have a kind of the waffle weave pattern on the inside, but then you have a nice border all the way around. So yeah, the other thing that I used that I really liked is I bought a whole pack, like 50 of these craft sticks. They're almost like um, paint stir sticks that you would get at a paint store. And I cut off maybe an inch of them. I just, I used, I went way overboard and used uh, my miter saw because <laughs> It's kind of already set up and I could do, you know, a bunch at a time. And so I cut off uh, an inch on those. So these are 11 inches and they completely cover um, the largest project. So this is the largest width that I have on my loom, that I can make on my loom. And, um, but it doesn't interfere with anything else on the loom. So I use these to tighten the warp. I also use these to just separate some of the projects and I thought they worked out really well. Um, the warp was very, very even. I was really happy with it. No strange mishaps <laughs> when I took the project off. And so, yeah, hopefully I will get that done um, by next week and I can show you how these turned out. I just thought they were so pretty. And my whole, I think I mentioned this before, but one of my, one of the reasons I wanted to pick up weaving is to do more home items. So I like to do some pillow covers and, you know, dishcloths. And eventually when I get a larger loom, I'd really like to start weaving dish towels and yeah. So table runners, things like that. So, um, this is the perfect size loom for dishcloths though. I was so happy to find this pattern and, um, yeah, I thought the color too. I chose the color on purpose because autumn's coming and I thought it would be pretty for autumn. Um, this is the creme brulee color in the uh, Knit Picks dishy. So I don't have any other weaving, uh, I guess, whips to show you. I did purchase another pattern on Etsy and it is another dishcloth pattern but it is using a really thin cotton. And so my purpose in wanting to use that is to figure out how to, I'm pretty sure it uses two heddles. And so when you use two heddles on a rigid heddle loom, you can actually double the ends. So you can use thinner yarn basically. And I wanted to practice using um, a thinner yarn, a thinner warp, because uh, that's a good prep to learn how to weave dish towels someday. <laughs> and so I'm building up all these skills. So eventually when I do save up and I purchase a larger loom, uh, I will know how to do it and it won't be a huge learning curve and wasted yarn. So that will be my next project.
I do have one acquisition that I'd like to share with you this week. This is the latest installment for my Hedgehog Fibers Club, which I show every month. I absolutely love it. It's First of all, it's so fun getting a package from Ireland. That's really neat. <laughs> and then also I love their fiber and I love their use of color. It's so fun. So if you haven't received your fiber yet for August, just skip ahead. But for the rest of you, I'm gonna go ahead and share, and share this with you. So this is the fiber for this month. It is so full of color. And I love it. It's a, it's a 125 gram combed top. It is 50% silk and 50% alpaca. So as you can imagine, it's incredibly soft. It has a beautiful luster because of the silk. And with all of the fiber from Hedgehog, they just have amazing colors so even when you open this up there's just going to be a ton of color and it's it's going to be interesting and now i don't normally really care for silk and i don't know what it is i just love the springiness and the texture of uh, wool but I am probably going to change my mind down the line because that's what always happens. <laughs> when I, um, I really wanted to weave for quite a while and I had never imagined that I would ever want to do anything chunky or textured and now I'm all about the chunky and textured. I love the way it looks. Same with spinning. When I began spinning, I only wanted to spin very, very thin yarns. I wanted to spin sock yarn. And now I'm doing long draw with tweety bits from my leftover yarn. Like, what is this? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm sure I'll change my mind down the line. This will go in my stash gladly. It's so beautiful. And yeah, I'm sure someday I'll love spinning with silk and I will have never imagined that I disliked it before. <laughs> So yeah, this was, um, it's always a delight to get and see what they're doing with all of their fiber. And I have a little space in my stash. I don't have a huge stash actually, but um, I do have a little space where I put all of my hedgehog fibers and they're so beautiful together. They all coordinate in their own way and um, they definitely have their own look, which I think is so fun. Well, I think that is all of my crafting projects for this week and what I'm going to be working on next week. I'm going to get uh, quite a bit done with the party top. That's my goal um, because it really is such a simple pattern and it's not a large uh, sweater by any means. I think I'm knitting the second smallest size, so it should knit up very quickly. And so I just, I, I don't want to spend any more time on it than I have to because I like to bounce around in projects. <laughs> I like to get things done. So I'll definitely be working on that. I will also be plying all of my tweed yarn and seeing how that's going. I wanna finish up my waffle weave dishcloths that I wove. And so that will just be, that's just me sitting down at my machine and, and doing that. And yeah, I actually dyed up another sweater quantity for myself for my autumnal sweater. I feel like every year I knit one sweater for fall and I just live in it. I love it so much. So now it's starting to become kind of a thing that I have to do every year, but I've had my eye on one particular color that I dye up and maybe some of you would know. I don't know. If you have any guesses, leave them in the comments below and I will show you next week but I'm so excited to share it with you because it is on a brand new base. And y'all know that the yarn shortage still exists. And so I have been searching high and low. I've been testing out samples. It's, it's crazy, but it's also opened up so many new possibilities of smaller uh, distributors and smaller mills that I can uh, source from. So that's kind of fun. And I found the most amazing base and I cannot wait to share it with you. Sorry for the teaser, 
but honestly, uh, the yarn's still in the dye pot, so I can't show it to you. <laughs> But a real quick update about my advent calendars. I have received so many messages from those of you who are wondering if they're going to be listed again and wondering, you know, can I get one this year? And I am so happy to share with you that I was able to put an end to my mini crisis, my mini skein crisis. And um, I will be listing them in small quantities on the shop. So um, before I kind of had like an, unlist, an un, um, unlimited listing of, min of calendars and because I have such a small quantity of yarn, I will be listing them probably about five at a time. As they sell out, I will re-list the listing just to make sure that I have enough yarn on my end and to be completely honest, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be skeining all of the mini skeins by hand. And so it's going to take me quite a long time to prep these calendars, but I'm just thankful at this point that I have yarn to do it with. <laughs> so um, I'm so happy that I found, uh, found some options for you and that I'm able to provide those for you this year. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. I love spending time with you and chatting about all the crafting. If you like the podcast, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also subscribe to my newsletter on my website, pineappleyarn.com. It's sent out about every two weeks. But I hope the rest of your week is so great. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and you are enjoying the last half of August. I would love it so much more if the mosquitoes would go away, but I guess that's life, right? <laughs> I'm sure we're in store for an absolutely beautiful fall, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I hope all of your knitting and crafting is going so great. So I will join you again next week. And until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.